Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm one of the Four Birds of Boating team. Uh, we're a team from the UK and South Africa and this time next year we're going to be rowing across the Pacific Ocean from Monterey Bay, California to Hawaii and on to Cairns, Australia and we'll be rowing in a boat just like this one here at the River and Rowing Museum in Henley. The reason we're here today is because our boat is named Mr Toad after the Wind in the Willows children's story because our journey is about promoting children and education all around the world. So this is a fairly typical ocean rowing boat. Um, this one belongs to Row to Recovery and there were six of them rowing across the Atlantic Ocean. Now our journey, there will be four of us and um, we'll be travelling almost three times the distance of the Row to Recovery team. But one of the important bits of kit is the solar panel. Um, and these solar, solar panels are here and they'll be, basically we'll be relying on those to make all of our electricity. So the electricity will be used for our uh, communications, our water maker um, and also the laptop so that we can communicate with people. Um, so that's really important. Uh, one of the things that every, every single ocean rower has told us is make sure that the hatch is closed because if you don't have the hatch closed and you get hit by a, you know, a freak wave or you roll then the ca cabin's obviously going to fill up with water and then your boat won't self right and then it will sink. So um, top rule, always keep the hatch closed and we already have that ingrained on our heads. Um, during the ocean row we'll be using up around 8,000 calories every day um, and obviously we need to try and take that food back on, back on board. So we'll be eating things like uh, this here. So um, we've got like chicken korma, vegetable tikka, different kinds of um, dehydrated food as well as snacks. So when we're not rowing we'll be just eating, drinking, resting, um, checking, checking our mail, um, communicating, looking at the navigation. So. Um, a lot of things to do in the two hours of rest. So this is the water maker and what this does is you put the seawater in one end and um, through a process of electrolysis it converts the seawater into drinking water but unfortunately it takes quite a long time um, and also a lot of um, energy so that's why you need the solar panels um, and if it breaks then you have to use a hand pump which takes even longer um, and obviously if you don't have water then and you're using up lots of water in, in rowing and being in the sunshine and you're sweating quite a lot then that's pretty um, pretty vital so uh, water maker is a really important piece of kit for the ocean row. Um, this is a, an ocean rowing boat rudder and this will be used to steer the boat um, but unfortunately when you have the waves and the sea and the salt it tends to um, corrode some of the metal and it's not unknown for the rudders to actually snap while you're using them. So that's going to be one of the potential issues we'll face on our row. So we'll have to learn how to fix them um, and replace them and obviously carry a spare one as well. Um, so the Rose Recovery team had modified seats because they were amputees. Um, so our seats are going to be a little bit different. Um, and because we're going on a much longer ocean row, we'll be away for about eight months, um, possibly. So we're actually going to have a lot more padding um, and perhaps some kind of sheepskin on top as well to stop our bottoms getting so sore. So this is a typical sliding seat. And um, the aim of this is that as you, as you row, you can actually slide your bottom backwards and forwards. Um, and ours are going to be a little bit more padded out so they'll be a bit more comfortable for our incredibly long journey of around eight months. So these are the feet straps. Um, you put your feet in here and you um, do them up um, and then your feet are kind of in the position then. So as you slide backwards and forwards on the seat, your feet are staying where they are. This is one of the very first ocean rowing boats um, and this one was used to row across the uh, English Channel um, quite different to our boat um, and you can see here that this is where they used to sit when they, when they rowed. Um, I think our seats are going to be a bit more comfortable. The whole, the whole reason for the row is that we want to bring the oceans kind of into the classroom and into students all around the world but in a very new way so um, to make lessons a bit more exciting because a lot of the children we've met so far have never been to the sea, they've never seen the ocean. So during the ocean row itself, over the eight months, we'll be teaching them live from the boat. Um, we have an online classroom and they'll be able to log in and ask us questions and, you know, if we see whales we can film them um, we're, and we're looking to make 3D films 
of the things that we see just to help bring things to life a bit more for them. Um, and then when we stop on the islands, for example, when we get to Hawaii, we'll be visiting all the schools in Hawaii, all the, all the way across the islands, and connecting those children with our, the children that we work with back in the UK and South Africa and um, all over the world, really. <laughs> and then kind of linking them together using Skype. So hopefully bringing children together from different cultures so that they can understand more about you know, where other people live and what it's like for them to live where they live. Um, the scientific research is a big part of our row and it's one of the reasons that our project started because we were quite concerned with um, how people, you know, we use so much plastic every day and we just, you know, we take this product and we just throw it away and use it once, which is not what it was designed for. So we now have all this plastic that's accumulating in the ocean and during the ocean row we're going to cross quite a few of the five gyres. Um, which you know, known as the kind of garbage patches of the Pacific Ocean. So some of our research is about documenting the plastic that we find, find um, and correlating that with cetacean sightings. So you know, when we see a whale or a dolphin or a shark, just um, kind of noting down the location of those creatures, and then seeing if they're travelling through areas of you know, really dense plastic pollution. Um, particularly from the tsunami as well, it might be that we find tsunami debris. So that's um, something we'll be looking at quite closely. And obviously that has a big impact as well on the food chain because if you've got fish that are eating plastic and then they're eaten by the birds and the whales, that's going all the way up the food chain and ultimately ends up in humans. Um, so we don't, we don't really know much about that yet. Um, and the plastic has a tendency to attract chemicals to it. So for example, DDT, um, and obviously if those things are ingested, they're, they're kind of chemicals that the body can't um, absorb properly, they can't break them down. So that's again ending up in our food system. So what, what impact is that going to have for humans in the long term? So that's a really part, important part of our research, just to find out what's out there and you know, how, can we, how can we educate people so that we don't become so wasteful with our plastics. I think my biggest fear on the ocean row is a little bit different to the rest of the team. Um, the rest of the team are afraid of the big waves, which I'm not too worried about at the moment, but my biggest fear is um, when we actually clean the boat. So going underneath the, putting the snorkel on and going under the boat every week to clean it. And it's not that I'm afraid of sharks or whales, it's just that element of surprise is not what I'm looking forward to. Things just, you know, you're in the deepest ocean in the world and things could just pop up underneath you and kind of make you jump. <laughs> so that's my biggest fear right now. It might change when we get on the ocean. So Musto is sponsoring a lot of our kit for the ocean row, um, including this shirt here that I'm wearing. Um, then I've got here the Trek bars, Trek and Naked bars, so those have come from natural balanced foods um, and they're full of protein and other kind of vitamins and minerals and I'm able to eat those immediately after my training sessions which is really important because that's when you're, after your training, that's when you build your muscles and on the ocean row we'll use up about 8,000 calories a day so if you don't have kind of fat before you leave then you start to eat your muscles. So um, it's really important that we build up our weight before we go, but also, most importantly, to build up our muscles because that's what's going to help us to move our boat across 8,000 miles of water. Um, so that makes a massive difference. And then um, I've been sponsored by Urban Fitness Gym in Henley and Pure Stretch Studio as well. Um, and I'm actually drinking a drink that's called uh, Energy, which um, is supplied by the gym here. And that includes, it's kind of an isotonic drink, so it has all your, again, vitamins, minerals, salts, um, sugars, to help you with your, with your training. Um, and it, it's really important to have sponsors, and I think from a sports psychology point of view especially, because when we're, at, when we're at sea, that's going to be really, really hard sometimes. You know, we're going to have seasickness for the first few weeks. We're rowing for two hours at a time. We're resting two hours at a time. Um, and that's, that's a massive, you know, ask of your body over eight months. So 
when you're having those kind of bad moments where you're finding things really hard and you just don't think you can carry on, to be able to look at you know the smiley face on your socks and remember that, that, that the socks were given to you by, by Wacky Socks, by, by a sponsor, it's like all these people have invested energy and time and money into us. So that really helps from a sports psychology perspective because it makes us keep on going and remember that we're actually, we might be on the ocean, just the four of us in the boat, miles from anywhere, but we've got all these people who've, who've made the journey possible, who've been with us since the beginning and um, you know, are there all the way behind us, helping us to cross the ocean and ultimately to raise money for children's education and to bring the ocean alive for people um, all around the world. So you know, that's, a, that's a really huge thing and it's really important. So the whole reason for the row is really about bringing the ocean alive for the children who are following our project. So that means um, being their eyes and ears and using film and photography and the online classroom to try and bring, really bring the animals, the flora, the fauna to life for these, for these young people. And of course, if you're feeling really inspired, you can always sponsor us. Um, now's a really exciting time, um, beginning of our journey, long way to go still. So um, yeah, get involved.